Hello, I'm Ross McKenzie, the author of The Nowhere Emporium and The Elsewhere Emporium, and I am absolutely delighted today to be introducing you to the finale of the award-winning Emporium trilogy, The Otherware Emporium. Uh, before I give you a, a quick sneak peek at the book, uh, I just want to say a really quick thank you to all the booksellers, librarians, teachers, uh, bloggers who have really got behind the Emporium books right from the start. Um, your support and your backing has meant so much to me. It's opened so many doors and it's made such a huge difference. And, you know, I guess the, the words thank you aren't big enough, but um, thank you all for, for everything you've done. Five years ago, when the Emporium published, I would never have imagined, I could never have imagined the uh, the journey that was to follow. Uh, since then, there have been award ceremonies, there have been live television appearances, there's been a Blue Peter badge, um, there have been countless school visits where I have I've met thousands, literally thousands of, of young readers from all over the country. And it's provided me with so many memories um, that I'll treasure forever. So in a way, I am I'm sad to be finishing up with that, finishing up with the Emporium. Um, but I'm also excited at, uh, to excuse the pun, at turning, turning the page and, and finding what comes next. And I'm also excited to be finishing the book, finishing Daniel's story and finding out what your reaction and your feedback to that will be, because that's always a really sort of, um, that's always one of the most nerve wracking parts about being an author is to find out the reaction from your readers. So I'm excited about that. I'm excited to be finishing the trilogy. And um, without further ado, here is a very short reading, a little sneak peek of the new book, The Other Wear Emporium. Daniel put down his pen and sat back in his chair, the fire spitting in the darkened shop, its flames reflecting in the many treasures so tightly packed into the place. He picked up the Book of Wonders and admired his work, the detail and description. This, this would be one of his finest wonders yet. All was left to do, the final part of the process, was to close the book. When that happened, when those pages touched, the magic would be complete. The wonder would appear somewhere in the great carnival of wonders behind the red curtain by Daniel's desk. Scanning the work one more time, he gave a nod of satisfaction and closed the book with a snap. He waited. He sat forward. He stared at the book through narrowed eyes. His heart began to pick up pace and the feeling that something was wrong sat heavy and cold in his belly. Still clutching the Book of Wonders, he shot to his feet and wheeled away through the curtain. At last, after goodness knows how long, hurrying through the great tent city that comprised the Carnival of Wonders, between tents as tall as ten-storey buildings and tents as small as phone boxes, all under an impossible twilight sky, Daniel came around a corner and skidded to a halt on the dry summer grass. His arms dropped to his sides, his right hand still gripping the book, his head tilted slightly, slightly to the left as his eyes surveyed the scene. There, between two enormous tents, one of rich purple silk, the other of gold and black velvet, was the new wonder. The new tent, however, was not shining and splendid as newly born wonders usually were. It was small and plain and lopsided. It looked sad. Daniel moved slowly towards the tent. When he reached the curtained entrance, he stopped and touched the worn canvas. Holding his breath, Daniel brushed the curtain aside and entered. He should have been standing in a vast plain during the Cretaceous period, surrounded by huge plant-eating dinosaurs. Instead, he found himself in a bare, 
cold attic room. Cobwebbed strands hung from the ceiling and coated the small window. The floorboards were warped and dusty and creaking. The flowery faded wallpaper was peeling from the walls. There was no furniture, no boxes or shelves, nothing. The only feature was a door in the far wall of the room. Daniel's eyes scanned the door. There was nothing special about it. It was, by the look of it, a normal door, the sort you might find in any house. And yet it made him uneasy. This whole room made him uneasy. He turned to leave. Then he stopped and spun around. Had he just heard? Was someone behind the door? Daniel stood still as death, listening, waiting. No sound came, no movement. He edged across the room. When he reached the door, he realised that he was clutching the Book of Wonders tight to, to his chest, the way a child hugs a security blanket or soft toy. He stood inches from the door, so close his nose was almost touching it. And he listened. Still nothing. He could not shake the feeling, though, that there was something on the other side. Hello? Daniel's voice sounded strange to him, shaky and hesitant. Is someone there? No reply. Daniel reached out a trembling hand and wrapped his fingers around the door handle.